And as I was preparing this week, I came across this quotation. Um, and I've got the reference here. It's out of a, a letter written by Ellen White in 1897. We're going to unpack it. It says, The light God has given us for the world is not to be put under a bushel or under a bed. What is the light God has given us, the, the Adventist people, to go to the world? What is that light? The everlasting. Well, the truth, yes. The everlasting gospel, the three angels' messages. And the everlasting gospel is not the historic, penal, legal gospel, Jesus came to pay your penalty so you can go to heaven. That is not the everlasting gospel. Right. The everlasting gospel is the eternal good news about God. God. His character, his methods, his kingdom... His law, which is design law. Worship him who made the heavens and the earth. The, this is the everlasting gospel that we are to take to the world. This is the light that we are to shine. Continuing on. The devil is far from being narrow and prescribed in his work, meaning he doesn't limit his work just to a few. The devil is broad in his work around the planet. That's what that means. Uh, this, plainly, this is plainly revealed by the re- Rapidly increasing darkness, the multitudinous errors, heresies, misconceptions, and delusions of these last days. <laughs> Are we seeing any of that happening right now? Continuing on. The creeds and false doctrines. What's a creed? Another word for a creed? Fundamental belief. Fundamental belief, yeah. yeah. Because the Adventist church doesn't have a creed. It has fundamental beliefs. But the definition of creed is a fundamental belief. But creeds and false doctrines are popular and all-pervading to leave the minds of the world with the drinking of the wine of Babylon, the most deadly heresy. What is the wine of Babylon? The most deadly heresy? Lies about God. Lies about God, but particularly, what's the particular core root lie of Babylon that all the other lies are based off of? Evolution. No, not evolution. God's laws function like... There it is. And this is the lie from the, from the inception. God's law functions like human law. It's an imposed system of rules. And therefore, sin is a legal problem. Therefore, salvation, somebody has to pay a price. Therefore, God is the executioner and the punisher. Therefore, we need to be protected from God. And all the other corruptions and false doctrines stem from the idea that God's laws function like human laws. This is, this is, the, uh, this is the core. And that led the church into functioning like a state... In the Dark Ages, a hierarchical system with authority over people, with a few ruling elites exploiting the masses, like every human government in history until the United States with its constitution, which purposely was structured to break up the hierarchical powers and give power to the people. It's again why the United States as a supra has to be destroyed and, and the power of the masses have to be eroded. The neglect of the plainest warnings will place us on the guilty list. Mm -hmm. Meaning what? It's simple. The neglect of the remedy places you on the diagnostically terminal list. You didn't take the remedy, you can't get well. That's all that means. Yes, we have plenty of evidence of Satan's might. We have evidence also that the day of work is nearly ended. The day of work. Do you see Christ's return is near? Can you see the signs? Let every power that God has entrusted to his agencies be now employed. Restrict no one's labor in any line if they are established in the truth, but let all uh, work who, who will. The great apostasy is working to a point and will develop into darkness deep as midnight, impenetrable as sackcloth. So what is the great apostasy? Pardon? The Sabbath changed to Sunday? No. The great apostasy is not the change of the worship worship day. It is a piece of the great apostasy. The great apostasy, you might call it also the great controversy. The great controversy is not over the Sabbath. What's the great controversy over? God's law. God's character, God's law, God's methods, God's kingdom, God. It's over God. How he runs his universe. And the great apostasy is the rebellion against God's system to establish another system made up of rules and authority and coercion and force. This is the great apostasy. This is the time to employ any system that can be devised to discover and counteract the leaven of error. 
Any system, any method, any, any tools that we can bring to bear that can expose the, the imposed law lie and get people from rebelling against God's character and government to bring them back into the, to the kingdom. Any system we can do, we need, to, we need to do it. We should expose the lies. But how about if, if doing so up, upsets somebody and hurts their feelings? <laughs> Shouldn't we be more sensitive? Shouldn't we just tell them it's okay for them to believe any way they want because their truth is their truth? Or should we expose the errors and lies with evidence and truth? In the next words, let there be light. There should be 100 light bearers in our world where there is one today. Darkness will become more dense in human minds after the truth has penetrated and been rejected. That's an absolute fact. If you've had the truth, you've understood it, you said, no, I don't want it, it actually becomes harder for you to respond to truth. You've got a wall up now. It's not a new idea I need to think of. I've already thought about that. I'm not interested. Your mind becomes darker. But there are some minds where the darkness will be removed. They recognize the light. The apostasy will exist in this night of spiritual darkness. It will be destroyed by the brightness and exceeding glory of Christ's coming. Oh, what a day of gladness for the righteous that will be. What a breaking of the spell of fanaticism and delusive sentiments when Christ shall shine forth his ancient glorious, ancient gloriously. Then the system of satanic delusion, which souls have preferred to the truth, that involves a cross that we've broken up. They, they preferred the, the delusion to the truth that involves a cross. In other words, no self-sacrifice. They don't want self-sacrifice. They want something that pleases them. They want, they want to be told what their itching ears want to hear. They don't want to hear something about um, something that would require them to give up something they like. Keep going. Satan has come down with great power to work with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. The powers of deception are working upon minds in every country to gain a foothold. Satan is seeking to hedge up our way in this country. Hedge up our way. What's hedge up our way mean? Block our way. way. Obstruct our way. Put barriers in the way. Restrict our liberty. That's what hedge up our way means. Restrict liberties, have the churches closed, have the schools closed, restrict visitation to our friends, have our assemblies restricted, have our free speech restricted, have our, our, our program censored. We don't see any of that happening, do we? <laughs> and how many have we seen in the churches that actually support these methodologies? I encourage you, if you haven't read my blog from Thursday, the Ten Commandments of Religious Liberty exposes what the church is supposed to do on religious liberty and what actually happened. The night of trial, the night of weeping, the night of persecution for the true sake is not far distant. This was written in 1897. Are we entering this time? Is it about to break upon us, the time of trial, the time of weeping, the time of persecution? It is through much tribulation, that we shall stand as faithful sentinels to God, not swerving one hair from truth and righteousness. Famines will increase. Pestilences will sweep away thousands. Not millions. (laughs) Thousands. Dangers are all around us from the powers within and satanic workings within, but the restraining power of God is now being exercised. The restraining power of God exercised in 1897. It's still being exercised right now. Probation hasn't closed. But do you see the four winds loosening? Mm -hmm. His hearts are hardening. Mm -hmm. God's presence is withdrawing. Satan is gaining more power on the earth to do his evil. We see it happening. Satan has desired to have you, that he might sift you as wheat, is applicable to to very many souls. Yet we are not left helpless. The Lord spreads his covering hand over us and says, I have prayed for you that your faith not fail. Yes, the enemy is raging. We see the, the, the enemy's forces rising, but we have a Savior who has not forsaken us and will not leave us. The, it's quite a visual to think of the Lord praying for us. I know. Isn't it? Yes. And he's not praying to his father to influence his father to do something he wouldn't. He's actually praying 
for us to not lose faith in him. For us to not take our eyes off him. For us not to get caught up into what the world is doing and be so caught up in fear and overwhelmed with it that we give up. That's who he's pleading. He's pleading for you and me to listen and, and to keep our eyes fixed on him. Next. The night of trial is nearly spent. Satan is bringing in his masterly power because he knows his time is short. Are you encouraged by that? The trial is nearing its conclusion. The time is spent. It says the trial is nearly spent. The trial is almost over. But Satan is bringing his final great deception to fruition. Can you discern it? Are you seeing it? Or are you caught up in the hysteria? You're caught up in the narratives. You're caught up in the media. You're caught up in emotionalism and over empathy. Can you go on? The chastisement of God is upon the world to call all who know the truth to hide in the cleft of the rock and view the glory of God. What does it mean? The chastisement of the Lord. God is because of hearts are hardening. God is letting his protective hand loosen as people are rejecting him. Satan is gaining more power. Disasters are increasing. Evil is occurring. And people who have not hardened their heart are being presented with evidences on different methods and different systems for them to make a choice. This is a chastisement, a mercy. God's people, those who love truth, love, and liberty... It says, what to say? Uh, they will hide in the cleft of the rock and view the glory of the Lord. Fear God and give glory. glory. Where are they going to view the glory of the Lord? In, in the people who reveal his character. We are to be the glory distributors, if you will. Beacons of God's kingdom and the methods that we use. The truth must not be muffled now. Plain statements must be made. Unvarnished truth must be spoken. Yet I get emails almost every week. I don't like it when you talk about things in the world. Just tell us Bible stories. Yeah. That this is upsetting us. It's uncomfortable for us. We don't like it. We're not going to listen anymore. Do you actually think that Satan's end-time delusion is that he presents himself with red horns and a pitchfork and says, I'm the devil and all you guys can follow me now? He is coming under a guise that the vast majority of the world would say, that's right. That is righteousness. That is justice. That's the right way. That's what we think is right. That's how he's coming. And all these people who are taking away your liberties and mandating you do certain things because we have to save lives, and it's right. And I can't tell you how many people emailed me and couldn't discern it. Couldn't discern the corruption. 